Where are you going to run to now? So where are you going now? What's up? Uh, you know, uh, right during the break, while we were listening to where you're going to run to now, I was watching that YouTube video of me losing. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little and bit. You know what? What? There was a lot of booing. People were screaming boo. I know. <sighs> it was hysterical. Oh, that was lovely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell us about that song, Where Are You Going to Run To Now? So Where Are You Going to Run To Now was written by Cherie Austin and Will Rambo. Um, they have written so many of the things that I have cut. Um, they're, they seem to be wonderful people. I've only worked with them once in person. Um, at that time, when I cut that song, I thought, I was going through some really terrible crap. And I honestly thought that that song was about other people in my life, but honestly, it was about me because I ran from the difficulties that were going on and you know, that was what I what you did. That's what you were taught to do. You know, yep. your parents mm -hmm. do that. You know, my mom didn't, but my father did. And unfortunately, it's kind of one of those things. And looking back on that now, it's funny because they have there's so many people that and it, of course, it had a nice radio life during its yep. initial um, run. But honestly, I was listening to that the other day without Cherie just with me mm -hmm. and um, Mike Ofka from Innovation. And I thought to myself, you know what? I think it's better without her. <laughs> <laughs> she would no probably find that funny. Tree. She probably would. Um, but honestly, I think it's such a wonderful song. And I think it's one of those things that, you know, it can be about somebody else, but it can also be self-reflective. And you mm -hmm. think about um, how much you need to just stand your ground and do this stuff because you're not going to get anywhere until you do it. And there's so many people um, in my <coughs> friend circle that really mm -hmm. respond to that song. Um, Cody and Drew and AJ, every time they drink, they're always playing that <laughs> song. Um, and, you know, that's the only ringtone that is available to download where I'm on all the social so far music. But we're going. Yes. Um, but they... Um, you know, they, they love that song. And I think it's important to, you know, this <laughs> it's cliche this time around, I think it's <laughs> important to actually um, it's amazing what you could do when you have uh, financial stability behind you that is your own. Right. Self worked. And so the putting the money behind something to get it heard mm -hmm. um, isn't as scary because you don't feel like you made a deal with the devil. I understand. Or deal with somebody else so it's really cool now that I, with the new single you know I've put a, you know some money behind getting it dressed up and getting it um, on Spotify and doing this stuff and you know I never I have songs that have been on Spotify for years that mm. have only gotten to you know 7,000 streams and the song with Jamie O'Neill in a, in a week has gotten to over almost 8,000 streams and I just think it's so crazy to me because there was a time that, you know, I would have dreamt about 8,000 streams and thought that was impossible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, nothing's impossible, just like Casey Allen and his uh, new duet with Neil McCoy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't, be, can't, can't be countered upon. He's always going to be that so thorn in my side. <laughs> he's, he's singing with the number one, you know, 90s country artist of them all. That's yeah. right. But, um, you know, he's got his own brand of stuff, and so do I. And yeah. That's right. You know, so it, how did it come about it. that uh, you were able to hook up with Jamie O'Neill on this project? So um, just, I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that when I can't sleep, I'm going through TikTok and going through um, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> so I was – I always listen to – uh, there is no Arizona. It was Jamie O'Neill's first single. I love that song. And I was listening to it one night. I think I might have been having a libation or two beforehand. <laughs> but a little drunk I was thinking dialing. about the fact that do what? Is that a little drunk scroll in there on your phone? There was a little there was a little Jack Daniels there. But, um, <laughs> so I just was looking at her Instagram. I was listening to her music and I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to ask her what she thinks about this song. Um, Because the demo was just me singing. Right. Mm -hmm. And she loved it and asked if I would be interested in having her sing on it. And I'm like, um, no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Honestly, when you do those things, when you message a blue checked person on Instagram. Yeah. First of all, you never know if they're going to respond or if they're even going to read it. Right. But she did and she did. And then we kept messaging back and forth. She did the vocals. And then when we did that, I thought to myself, because it was originally just an acoustic mm-hmm. song, um, I decided, you know, I think we need to build this. Mm-hmm. So we added instrumentation. We had some uh, lovely guys from different cities. You know, it's amazing what you can do without ever meeting each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's add um, some pieces to the song and it just it, to me it's it's haunting and it's so funny because the beginning still starts out the acoustic and then it builds and it just it, it's just like perfect yeah and it's absolutely does, amazing I learned terms she oh. does this lovely talk back with me at the end of the song where we're going back and mm-hmm. forth and I just think it's might be and I'm partial but for me to for me to sit there and be when I go to Spotify to Jamie O'Neill's account and see appears on right and there's my song it just blows my mind because I never would have thought that that would have ever happened and it's so beautiful and then we just started texting and all this stuff and she's coming to town um, next week so a week from tonight, her and I will be singing together at a little release house party for mm-hmm. If This Were a Love Song. And then the next day, she'll be playing at Jamboree in the Mountains in West Virginia. And she asked me to sing our song with her on stage. In front nice. Of so it's been a lovely, um, a lovely, I, I guess I could say friendship. Yeah. Uh, she called me yesterday and I, and I, it was the first time we ever physically spoke on the phone. And I <laughs> fangirl at the beginning. Um, I was a little odd, but you know, it's funny to me because you think about the fact that somebody's first album went platinum and they got Grammy nominations mm-hmm. for two out of five of the country song of the year, Grammy nominations, you know, like all these things happen and to be so humble, to take a listen to somebody who has less than 4,000 followers on Instagram, you know, not that she felt as though she was going to benefit anything from this. She did it because she liked the song. Yeah. She liked my voice. Mm-hmm. And I just think that was shows her character. And she loves animals. Uh, the intriguing thing, because I'm a dog lover, uh, you know, of many categories. Yeah, what, four, five? Four. Yeah. Four. Well, we have four, but we're watching the sister right now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's one of those things, like, she... I went back and read the liner notes from shiver the, her first album and mm-hmm. when i think about angels she literally in that liner notes she had pictures of her two um puppies dogs Aww. that had passed away and she dedicated that song to them all the way back when it first came out oh like, wow, wow. The things. That you is always awesome. thought it was a per- about a man <laughs> when you watch the, even when you watch the music video there's no man in it that's so, true yeah she loves her dogs, and I just think that's so crazy. And even after the show next week, she's like, well, I want to go back to your house afterwards and meet your puppies. So oh, how sweet. Oh, how cool. Well, we've talked yeah, so about the song. Gonna... How about we play the song? Well, yeah, let's do that. All right. <laughs> I, and I'll throw you back in the green room so you can uh, take a little break, and then we'll come right back to you. Here's Matt Van Fossen and Jamie O'Neill, if this were a love song. Biggest 
part of me And that won't ever change And they say If you love someone Just set them free And pray that they don't fly away If this were a love song There wouldn't be so many tears I wouldn't be sleeping all alone Cause you That is an absolute beautiful song. Very well done. Love it. Well, <laughs> yes, I noticed. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Hi, what? Uh, yeah. I, she was sitting I, here I just uh, singing right along. I tell you. Singing right along. I. It's. It, it is. It's beautiful, and it's just really to me. It's surreal. You know, I think about all the times in my existence where I have been. I have used. Um, her original song there is in arizona for some event that's gone on in my life where someone disappointed me or this mm-hmm. and the other like it has been such a banner song for my existence and to think that she's on a song with me and i get to meet her next week and perform with her twice in a week like at, uh, it's just crazy it's crazy how things happen but that proves you have to take a chance in life and that's right and do things like that and i think you know for me you know, it's like when you when you know somebody's the the right one, you you take a chance on that too. That's mm-hmm. why I'm married, and you know that that's a change for sure. <laughs> but it's funny when you have the right support system at home, how easy it makes um, doing all of that. And I think that you know, going being uh, being the significant other to somebody that traveled as much as I did before. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID definitely had to be taxing. Um, and, but, you know, when you get those comments where, you know, I'm proud of you, you've, you know, this is different for you before, you know, and I think that's something when they acknowledge that, you know, I'm really pushing the song. So, you know, if you haven't, go listen to it on Spotify or Apple <laughs> Music. Or that's Google right. We Play. need to get those if this were love song. Spotify things going. Absolutely. Right. But that's the thing. I'm terrible at talking. I, I'm t- I, no, that's not true. I'm good at talking. <laughs> I'm not good at talking about myself. You're not good at right. self promotion. Now, you now some yeah. of you, some of the older music you said you've taken down and but you're going to re-release that and put it back on streaming. Is that your plan? That's correct. So, I'm going to repackage um <laughs> you know, some of one of the things you do as an artist is you self-evolve. While I've maintained I've stayed in the same genre, um I have had <laughs> several images um 
that have existed <laughs> over the years. So I think there's some things that um, some really beautiful music that I have put out and some mm -hmm. very fun music. And I would like to, I don't want to say reimagine because most people have never heard any of it, but I just kind of want to maybe give it a 2022 facelift and put mm -hmm. maybe some new vocal on mm -hmm. and you know really just polish it because i have been blessed to have so many incredible songs pitched to me um i feel like they deserve the best presentation possible so i took it down so that i can um work on the re i guess like i said repackaging um and redoing some vocals on some things and who knows you know there was a couple of songs on the last record that were all just acoustic tracks and maybe you know they can be built into something uh larger with somebody else singing too you never know <laughs> yeah um, maybe you never know so i just think it's cool i mean you could still find the music and on youtube and all of that stuff but i think i'm gonna slowly like re-release pieces of it and then mm -hmm. i'll do a compilation mm -hmm. you know really taking the time to see that people don't know who i am outside of a circle mm -hmm. and so while i'm getting the the attention from having miss o'neill on the on the song with me and you know her name recognition is incredible but just being able to hit new people mm -hmm. um with better products because I, as somebody who's been around since the beginning we have to be well aware that I've come a long <laughs> way from the man that was recording covers yes. as CDs and selling them with printed off Walmart <laughs> photo center <laughs> covers um, that were burnt onto, onto right. uh, CDRs. Um, you know, so as you use your, vo your voice, it gets stronger. It's a muscle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I hope to God that I'm a better singer than I was 10 years ago. And, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely did a show a couple of weeks ago where I did. And I think Brian was the one who called this out. There, there was one time I was doing a live and he uh -oh. said something about me doing my heart will go on. And that, that, that part of my voice, I don't use. The false <laughs> So yeah. So at black, when I was playing at black sheep vineyard, I, I did that song and I did uh, Kelly Clarkson because of you. Mm -hmm. And, um, I did hopelessly devoted to you <laughs> because Olivia Newton-John passed away. Yeah. And one of my favorites is um, My Immortal by Evanescence. Oh, yeah. Mm. And to get to do that, I just think, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of fun. Not that I want to be a pop artist, but it is fun to show people that you can sing something that doesn't have a twang. Yeah, right. well, it's right. I think it's definitely important to show you that you do have a range as an artist mm -hmm. that you're just, you know, as they say, not a one trick pony. Yeah. I and mean, it's fun to throw those sure. those kind of songs into a live set for sure. Oh, absolutely. Get and everybody going. Have fun with it. Well, you've talked about all the songwriters, you know, that, you know, that you've worked with, that have had songs pitched to you. Uh, and I know, you know, traditionally you don't you normally write a lot. Um, is that something that you're going to start uh, dabbling in in this uh next phase of your career well that's the goal you know it when you're not surrounded by people that do it um it, it was hard for me to step outside that barrier but truthfully you know i think that if i were being honest after i lost my mother um for until i started therapy for it i was mm -hmm. living in a very dark place um so nothing good was coming out of me um writing wise because it was all sad not that not that i don't love a ballad because you know it's my favorite thing in life but um it was all sad so now i'm in a place where with jamie um you know she's gonna work uh hmm. with me on writing so hopefully we can co-write hmm. something good um well i got some recommendations coastal americana tropical country it's all feel good music <laughs> Well, you know, we'll sing about Miller Lite, and what what is she drinking? Oh, Jack Daniels Peach. <laughs> oh, it is Jack amazing. Just is saying. How many sugar grams are in it? Oh Lord, I don't yeah, we're know. not going to start on that. Why, why you got to call me no, out? Yeah. Less than Mountain Dew. No. How about that? We could do that. You know, I think that's <laughs> a great idea because there is no place I'd rather mm -hmm. be. In a beach. Nice. There you go. For sure. 
Right. Well, Matt, we want to thank you so much. I'm, I'm sorry that it, you know, the first time it didn't work out. We had the technical issues. Um, and then just before you come on, we had technical issues. <laughs> so, but I, I, I want to blame our sponsor, Joe Leo, because the, it seems like every time I had him on, we have a technical issue. And mm-hmm. then, but also, well, it happened with you again, too. So yeah. I don't know who to blame, but I'm glad it worked out so that we could get you on here and introduce Matt Van Fossen to the world. And uh, so that oh, people I could see the guy that we know that, uh, you know, we grew to love uh, all the years that uh, that we've known you. That's right. Well, and I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and share my music with with y'all and uh you know i i will not say no to recording an ocean bound song so we will Fabulous. as much as you love the ocean and love the beach honestly it's a natural fit it really is it should be it should be for sure yeah. so you're just talking about something about going down to the ocean keeping right. my feet in the sand until the tide comes back love and life and I'm so drunk. you know yeah. that's the thing because i you know one of the things i love to do at the ocean is to take a cooler sit down and then drink until the tide comes back to my feet, and then I'll go back to the house. Well, there's a song right there. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a song. You know, the beach Tell is Dana. a place where your, your your worries can just wash away. And they do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much. We are going to uh, leave you with uh, a fun song that you recorded uh, a little while back. Uh, how about uh, She's Just Like That? We'll see you, Matt. Thank you. I love you. Love you.